boy and thought it was Eli. Then the next time he called, I said, here I am. Speak, for your servant is listening. Of course, there was that time that witch woke me up. If it had been her this time, I would have given her such a smack and then I would have done Sorry, Lord. Sometimes I get carried away. So, here we are again. How may I serve you? Oh, I see. So David's time is coming. And he will soon rest with his fathers. Well, it is the way of men. He did many great things in your Lord, who are all these people? <laughs> They're dressed so funny. Oh, so they want to know his story. And you want me, Samuel, to tell it. Oh, wonderful, I would be honored. And after all, who better? I was there from the very beginning. So, you want to know his story. <laughs> it is one of the most wonderful stories in all of history. It is a story of courage and honor, of loyalty and devotion. It's a story of forgiveness and grace. It, it's a story Thank you. 
was a man such a special calling to which the Lord had called him. In the green hills above Bethlehem, he picked up his small heart, and out of his heart poured a psalm about God being his shepherd and his commitment to follow the calling. The Lord is my shepherd, my trusted friend and guide. I don't need anything. He's always there. He takes care of me. He makes me walk in pleasant places, green pastures, and by a quiet stream, mountain lakes and still waters. He refreshes my spirit. He restores me. He guides me along a path of righteousness. A path he chose for his name's sake. And if I face the hardest, most difficult challenge in my life, He felt the courage welling up in his heart to stand up for the honor of God. 
his weapons in his hand and a challenge in his voice. He made the men in Israel's army turn and run. Choose a man and send him down to fight me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. But if I overcome and kill him, we'll send your spineless army to their grave. But then the king dressed the youth in his own tunic. Peace.
made with my own brothers. Saul's daughter McCall fell in love with David, and eventually became his wife. Saul was jealous of David's success. He was afraid that he was going to take away his kingdom, so he plotted to kill David. Once, he even hurled a spear at David, trying to pin him against the wall while he played the harp. But David dodged the spear and ran for his life. Later, as Saul's men surrounded David's house, the call saved him by letting him down through the window. He escaped, fled into a field nearby, where Jonathan came to see him. David! 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 Jonathan! David! Jonathan! Oh. The right tears, just confused. Jonathan, what have I done? Why is your father so determined to kill me? <laughs> that can't be true. I'm sure he's planning no such The thing. fact that I'm here proves that he is. No. He always tells him everything he's going to do. He never hides something like this from me. Jonathan, your father knows we are friends. He doesn't want you to be hurt. But the truth is, I'm only one step away from death. Tomorrow, it's the beginning of the New Moon Festival. Now, I've always been with your father for the feast, but this time, this time I'll hide in the fields until the evening of the third day. What good will that do? If your father asks where I am, tell him. Tell him I've gone to Bethlehem for a family reunion. If he gets upset, that will be proof that he's trying to kill me. And if he doesn't get upset, then I'll know all as well. When you do this for me as my sworn brother, I would never do that. Give me your hand. I swear by the Lord God of Israel that I will tell you my father's plans. If he wants you killed, then may the Lord kill me if I don't tell you so you can escape. Thank you, Jonathan. David, I know that you are the king. May the Lord be with you as he used to be with my father. I just ask one thing. Name it. Remember to demonstrate the love and kindness of the Lord. Not only to me during my lifetime, but to my children. After the Lord has destroyed all your enemies, may I be cursed forever. Do not swear by curses. Swear by your love for me as your true friend. For my life, and by my love for you as my true friend, I swear it. Thank you, my friend. Now, here's what we'll do. Hide yourself behind that boulder. I'll come out to three arrows in front of it as the one shooting at a target. Then I'll send a light into the field together. Now, if you hear me tell them they're on this side of the boulder, then they know all is well and there is no trouble. But if I tell him, go for it, the arrows will still be on you. I 
things. But the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and he had no answer. So in desperation, Saul tried something else. Find me a woman who can consult the spirits. Maybe she can give me an answer. Then I'll wear a disguise. I need to know. Here, sire. What do you want? Cast your spells. Awaken the person I named you. Don't you know the law? What King Saul has decreed? He has cut off all mediums and spirits and spread the net. Are you trying to trap me and bring about my death? As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you. Just do as I ask. Ooh, you said I can't Samuel. I want Samuel. No.
tribes of the north were ruled by Ishbosheth, one of Saul's sons. For the next seven years, there was a civil war in Israel, but then the king and his great general Abner were slain. Then all of Israel came to Hebron and anointed David as their king, and one of the greatest celebrations in all of Israel's history. David was now 37 years old. <laughs> it had been 20 years since I had first anointed a king. He needed a neutral city to bind the country together. He chose Jerusalem and took up residence in the fortress of Zion. And it became known as the city of David. As the mountains surround
Washington, and each summer, over 700 people from the United States alone. Hello, my name is Daisy, and to tell you the truth, when I first heard that leprosy was still a problem in the world today, I was really surprised. But just as it did 2,000 years ago, leprosy still maims hands and feet, maims the heart and soul. But it doesn't have to. American Leprosy Missions is dedicated to finding children with leprosy and curing them. That's right, there is a cure, and you can help provide it. For $200, you can cure one child of leprosy. You can give them a chance to live a normal life. And that $200 can be broken up into $16.67 for the next year, each month. Inside your program, there's an envelope. It says American Leprosy Missions Campaign to Cure. Fill that out and bring it back to me. I'll be out in the lobby. If you have any questions at all about leprosy or American Leprosy Missions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. One of the things we pray for every day is that uh, many people who see our concerts would find it in their hearts to be able to help us with our desire to see people cured of leprosy. Now there's no financial obligation whatsoever tonight. If you just wanna talk with Stacy for a little bit, she will let you know how American Leprosy Missions can get in touch with you in the near future to let you know how you can provide that cure. But tonight, if you're able to make your first monthly gift of just a little over $16, or if you're able to even provide a complete cure, we have a special gift from American Leprosy Missions to you. A free cassette recording of our project, David, A Man After God's Own Heart, just as a way of saying thank you. Well, speaking of our cassettes, hopefully you noticed as you came in that we have a display set up in the lobby area of several tapes and some other great
When the armies went off to war, David stayed home. Now this was his first mistake. One evening around sunset, while he was strolling along the roof of his palace, David looked down into a garden nearby and saw a woman who was very beautiful. Who is that woman? She's that shoot, sir. What right is that? Uriah was an officer in David's army. He was currently fighting the Ammonites at Rabah, near the east of the Jordan. Tell that I want to talk to her. Yes, sir. This was David's second mistake. But when he finally met Bathsheba, he fell instantly in love with her. David sinned with Bathsheba, and she became pregnant with his child. In order to cover up their sin, an evil plan came into David's heart. He took it in hand and wrote a letter to Joab, commander of his army. Joab, the next time you attack the Ammonites, Send Uriah to where the fighting will be the hottest. Then pull away from him and leave him there, so that he will be killed. Joab did as King David commanded. He sent Uriah and a number of the other brave men in near the city wall, where he knew that they would be rushed out of heart. There was a fierce fight, but the Uriah and the others were slain. Joab sent a message to King David. Sire! War goes well. However, we attacked the city and sustained heavy losses, including your life. When David heard this, he sent another message. Dear Joab, glad to hear all is going well. Don't worry about the men slain in battle. Keep up the siege. Press forward. So, now that David's wicked deed was complete, after she had mourned her husband's death for a time, that she would join them in the palace and she became his wife. So a child was born to them, and David loved this child very much. But the Lord knew what David had done and was very displeased. He sent Nathan, the prophet, to tell David this. King David. King David. Nathan. Good to see you. What do you have to tell me this day? Something for you to judge, O okay? King. Very well. There were two men in a city. One was rich, and the other poor. The rich man had great flocks of sheep and herds of cattle. But the poor man had one little lamb. He grew up in his home with his children and drank from his cup and lay upon his lap. And it was like it was like a Sunday. One day the rich man had a friend over for dinner. The rich man did not kill one of his own sheep, but rather stole the lamb from the poor man and killed it and cooked it for a meal with his friend. What? Why, the man who did this thing deserves to die. He shall give back to his poor neighbor more fault for the land taken from him. How cruel to treat a poor man thus without pity for him. You are the man. What? You have done this deed. I, I, uh, the Lord has made you king, and he has given you this kingdom. Why then have you done this wickedness in the sight of the Lord? You have slain Uriah with the sword of the men of Ammon. You have taken his wife to be your wife. This is what the Lord has said. Out of your own house will I bring calamity upon you. The sword will never depart from your house. And the child born to you will die. Oh, God. According to your unfailing love. 
And he gives his love 
David grew old and weak. The Lord had given him victory over all of his enemies. So David wanted to give back to the Lord by building a magnificent temple in Jerusalem to house the Ark of the Covenant. But the Lord told David that he would not build this temple because he was a man of war. Instead, that most special task would fall to his son, Solomon, a man
Christian, do you need a fresh start to that relationship here tonight? Do you need a new beginning? If you do, then Jesus says to you, come to me. Or maybe as you sit there listening, maybe you have never in your entire life taken the time to come to Jesus to begin with. Maybe you have never as an individual asked him to be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you of your sins. If you do that one very simple thing, Jesus will give to you the free gift of eternal life with him. If you need to make that decision tonight, don't put it off. Don't say, oh, I'll do it later next week, I'll do it sometime in the future. Right now, Jesus says to you, come to me. In a few moments, I'd just like to say a very short and simple prayer. If you need to make a decision for Jesus Christ tonight, Maybe for the first time in your life. If you need that fresh start, then I would invite you to please pray after me. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes together for just a moment. Do you need to make a decision for him? If you do, then please pray this after me. Just pray right from your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that you died to pay the price for my sin. I believe that you are the Son of God. And I want you to be my With every head still bowed, with all eyes closed, no one looking around. If tonight you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, maybe for the first time, even if you've decided you just need a fresh start to your relationship with Him, we'd love to know who you are, just so that we can, we can know that you're here and pray for you. Would you raise your hand in the air for just a moment and let us know that tonight you have made a decision for Jesus Christ. Raise your hand. Lord bless you and praise the Lord. Is there anyone else here tonight? Lord bless you. I have come to Jesus tonight. Raise your hand if that's you. Let's pray together this evening. Almighty God, we just give you thanks and praise for being with us, for working in our presence here this evening. Father, I want to thank you most of all that, that when you could have forgotten us, when you could have abandoned us and set us aside forever, you didn't. You chose instead to come and to rescue us. For this, we will always give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for, for letting us come and worship our Lord with you this evening. Uh, don't forget about our tapes and CDs in, in the back. Don't forget about American Leprosy Missions. If uh, you want to find out how to cure someone of the awful disease of leprosy, then visit with Stacy in the back. Also, a special thank you to our host families. If you'll be taking one or maybe more of the Continentals home with you tonight, would you raise your hand up in the air for a moment? Host families, raise your hands. Oh, thank you for showing up. That's great. Keep your hands up in the air. Folks, please keep your hands way up in the air. Okay. Everybody else, this is very important. If you do not have your hand in the air, find someone who does and pray for them tonight. We'll leave it at that. Oh, so if you please give us just about 45 minutes to pack up all this equipment up, load up our bus and our truck for tomorrow. In 45 minutes, you can meet in the front of the sanctuary with our housing coordinator, Becky. And at that time, she will pair you up with the continental of your very own. She will also give you all of the feeding and care instructions that go along with your particular continental. And as soon as everything is packed up, they're all free to go for the evening. Don't forget about auditions. If you want to find out how you can have the experience of a lifetime, then come and ask any one of the continentals how you can do that. But most importantly, tonight, if you have made a decision for Jesus Christ, or if you have any questions about him, or you just want someone to pray with you, please come find one of us. 
We'd love to spend even just a moment encouraging you in that way. Well, to wrap things up tonight, I just want to invite you to welcome back the Continentals.